Good morning. It is very important to identify which object or objects are a part of your system, because the objects which are defined as the system determine how work and energy are related. Flippin' physics. Let's start with an example to show this. A block which is attached to a spring slides up an incline. That's it. Yep. I wanted something simple. A block attached to a spring sliding up an incline seemed pretty simple. Sure. Let's define the initial point after the block has started moving, and let's set the final point before the block has stopped moving, and before the block reaches the equilibrium position of the spring. And let's set the horizontal zero line at the bottom of the incline. That way, the block is always above the zero line. Mr. P. Yes, Bobby. That seems weird. You, usually, we choose initial and final points so that at least some of the energies are zero, which makes the problem easier. Right. I've set our initial and final points and horizontal zero line such that the block will always have kinetic energy and will always be above the horizontal zero line. I do not want any of the energies to be zero at either the initial or final points. Because I am trying to help you understand how the energies are related to work. If some of the energies were zero, it may be easier to solve the problem. However, it makes it more difficult to understand how energy and work are related to one another. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. You're welcome. Billy, please draw the free body diagram of all the forces acting on the block. Absolutely. The force of gravity acts straight down. The force normal acts up and perpendicular to the surface. The spring force acts up and parallel to the incline, and there is a force of kinetic friction which acts down and parallel to the incline. Thank you, Billy. Bobby, please determine which of these forces, if any, do not do any work on the block. Okay. The only way a force will not do work on a block when the block is displaced, as this block is. Is when the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement are perpendicular to one another. That means the force normal does not do work on the block. However, the other three forces do do work on the block. And <laughs> do do <laughs> children. In order to discuss the work and energy of systems, let's start with the most basic equation relating work and energy. This equation states that the change in energy of the system equals the net energy transferred into or out of the system. Let's rearrange the equation to make it easier to work with in this situation. Change in energy means energy final minus energy initial. We can add energy initial to both sides, and then let's switch the equation around so we get that the energy of the system initial plus the energy transferred into or out of the system equals the energy of the system final. Okay, let's define our first system as just the block. Bo, with the block as the system, which of the forces acting on the block are external to the block system? Well, the block is the system, so all of the forces which Act on the block are external to the system. There are no forces which act within the system, which are Newton's third law force pairs and cancel out. So, yeah, all the forces are external to the block system. Thank you, Bo. Now, as I said before, the block or the system in this case has kinetic energy initial and kinetic energy final. However, the block does not have gravitational potential energy. Hold up, Mr. P. Yes, Bo. The block is clearly always above the horizontal zero line, so the block clearly has gravitational potential energy initial and final. Does it really? Think about what is currently defined as the system. Oh, I get it. Gravitational potential energy only exists when you have at least two objects in your system.、Mm, right. Because the Earth is not a part of the system, and there is only one object in the system, the block, the system cannot have gravitational potential energy. Got it. Right. And realize, because the spring is not a part of the system, there is no elastic potential energy in this system at any point. That means that the energy of the system initial is only kinetic energy initial, and the energy of the system final is only kinetic energy final. Now remember. 
Energy is transferred into or out of the system via work done on the system by forces external to the system. In other words, the energy transferred into or out of our block system is equal to the work done by the spring force, the work done by the force of gravity, and the work done by the force of kinetic friction. The sum of all those works is the net work done on the system. We can subtract the kinetic energy initial from both sides of the equation. Kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial equals the change in kinetic energy, and we are left with net work equals change in kinetic energy, which is the what class? Work energy theorem, or what you like to call the network equals change in kinetic energy theorem. Exactly. The network equals change in kinetic energy theorem. Okay, let's add the earth to the system. Now the block and the earth are a part of the system. Billy, how does that change any of what we just talked about? Okay, now the system is both the block and the earth. Well, the force of gravity is now internal to the block earth system. How is the force of gravity internal to the block earth system? When the block and earth are both a part of the system, there are equal but opposite forces of gravity acting on both objects. Oh, right. Those two forces of gravity form a Newton's third law force pair. The force of gravity of the earth acting on the block and the force of gravity of the block acting on the earth equal and opposite. So they cancel one another out. That is why the force of gravity is internal to the block earth system. Thanks, Bo. You're welcome. That means instead of work done by the force of gravity on the system, we can now look at it in terms of the initial and final gravitational potential energies of the system. Uh, that means the equation ends up being kinetic energy initial plus work done by the spring plus gravitational potential energy initial plus work done by the force of friction equals kinetic energy final plus gravitational potential energy final. Very nice, y'all. Now let's add the spring to the system so we have the block, the earth, and the spring defined as the system. Bobby, how does that change our equation relating work and energy? Well, now the spring force is internal to the system. That is because the force the spring applies on the block has an equal but opposite force the block applies on the spring. Another th Newton's third law force pair which again means the spring forces are internal to the block earth spring system. That means that instead of work done by the spring force on the system, the system now has initial and final elastic potential energy. The equation then is kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial plus gravitational potential energy initial plus work done by friction equals kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final plus gravitational potential energy final. Absolutely, Bobby. Thanks. Notice we can do the same thing we did before with kinetic energy with both potential energies. We can subtract the initial value from both sides and get the change in, ener in each energy on the right-hand side of the equation. We end up with work done by the force of friction equals change in kinetic energy plus change in elastic potential energy plus change in gravitational potential energy. Who can tell me what that is? That is the equation work done by non-conservative forces equals the change in mechanical energy of the system. Right, because the force of friction is a non-conservative force then the work done by the force of friction is the work done by non-conservative forces. And the sum of the changes in all those types of mechanical energies is the change in mechanical energy of the system. Nice. Agreed, Billy. Very nice. Let's add one more object to the system. Let's add the incline to the system. Now the system is the block, the earth, the spring, and the incline. Bo. What does our equation relating work and energy look like now? Well, the force of friction is now internal to the system because there is a force of friction acting from the surface on the block and an equal but opposite force of friction acting from the block on the surface. Again, those two forces form a Newton's third law force pair and are internal to the system. That means that instead of work done 
by the force of friction on the system, the system now has initial and, and final internal energy. That means our equation relating work and energy for the block, earth, spring, and incline system is kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial plus gravitational potential energy initial plus internal energy initial equals, well, the sum of the final values for all of those types of energy. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Mr. P? Yes, Billy? If we subtract all the initial energies from both sides, we get that the sum of all those changes in energies equals zero. Does that make sense? That is a good question, Billy. Does it make sense? Uh, actually, it does. How? Uh, it just means energy is conserved. When you include everything in your system, like we have done here with the block, the earth, the spring, and the incline, you get conservation of energy because energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes forms. Actually, this is just a restatement of the equation we started with. The change in energy of the system equals the net energy transferred into or out of the system. But there is no energy transferred into or out of the system because the system contains everything. So the change in en energy of the system equals zero. I agree with that. Okay. Remember that the work done by the force of friction goes into the system as internal energy. In other words, the work done by the force of friction equals the negative of the change in internal energy of the system. And both the force of gravity and the spring force are conservative forces. Billy, what is the equation that relates work done by a conservative force and potential energy associated with that force? Oh, um, it's... Um, oh, it's uh, work done by a conservative force equals the negative of the change in potential energy associated with that force. That means the work done by the force of gravity equals the negative of the change in gravitational potential energy, and the work done by the spring force equals the negative of the change in elastic potential energy. Right. Therefore, if we take the equation we just ended with, move the changes in internal and potential energies to the left-hand side, and replace all the negative changes in energy with work, we return to our original network equals change in kinetic energy equation, and we are back to just having the block as the only object in our system, which is pretty much right where we started this lesson. Okay, replacing all those changes in energy with work means we are back to a system with only the block in it, and you have shown we can get back to the same network equals change in kinetic energy equation from, from way before. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Hopefully that helps you see the importance of identifying the objects which make up your system and how the objects in your system affect work and energy equations you include in your equations relating work and energy. So please... Remember to identify what object or objects make up your system. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.